Yes, people, so welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over how you can build a bot using BotPress for your AI automation agency. Now, we use bots a lot to get in the door of these companies, and we also sell them into these companies as well, and this is exactly what I'm gonna show you today. Now, not only am I gonna break down exactly how you do this step by step, I'm also gonna give you a simple blueprint that you can replicate over and over again for so many different businesses. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. And I'm also just gonna give you away the template so you don't even have to build it if you don't want to but I do recommend you learn how to build it so that you do become an expert at this when you are sending it to clients. As you already know, I love a good bloody presentation, me. And I have another one for you just quickly before we get into this bot build, which is going to really break down the reason why we built the bot this way and who we're building it for. So we're gonna be building it in BotPress. And as you can see, there is a picture here of some crying accountants. Now these accountants are probably crying because their marketing sucks, they have no idea how to get leads, and their business is just failing. So this is where we're gonna step in and help. Now of course, now of course, I'm using an accountant as just an example. This could work for so many different businesses and I'm actually gonna be creating different examples of different businesses you can build these bots for. And I'm gonna be showing you different types of bots that you can build over the next couple of weeks. But this time we're starting with accountants and instead of making accountants cry through their lack of marketing, we're now gonna be making accountants cry because they're getting fired for their jobs because they're no longer needed because our chatbot's gonna take over everything. Now, obviously that was a joke, please don't take it serious. But let's jump into why accountants. So accountants are a support heavy industry. They get a shitload of messages and a shitload of people wasting their time, sending them messages, asking them, when is my VAT due? Or when do I have to file my accounts? Like this is all stuff that they could find online. This is all stuff that could connect to the accountant's database for that independent client. And it could all talk to one another. And that just saves the accountant time. It means they no longer have to jump on a call with these people and have to answer these questions. So they usually have poor marketing efforts. Now this is just a generalization, but a lot of accountants that I've seen are very archaic. They get left behind, their websites are outdated, their methods of business are outdated, they barely run any Facebook ads, and just for some reason, they haven't got the grip of online digital marketing. So I guess they're caught up in the numbers, which is good for us, because we can step in and actually help them with this. So they also have a wide pool of potential clients, which means they have a massive opportunity when it comes to marketing, because their niche are business owners. Now I mentioned there's different types of bots that we could be building and I'm gonna show you some examples now. You can build bots that specifically are there to collect data and generate leads. You can collect bots that answer questions and act as like a resource for clients. You could build a bot that supports products and gives recommendations on e-commerce stores. Maybe you could even build a bot that does onboarding. So it's an internal bot that helps onboard clients into the business, whether that's a B2B service, maybe you run a marketing agency, and this bot is now being built to onboard your new clients and get all of the information you need from them just by using the bot. That means you no longer have to send out emails, you no longer have to handhold or jump on onboarding calls, all done with a chat bot. Then of course there is training bots, which is similar, but maybe you load it up with company information or training manuals, and then you hand them to your staff members to use on a day-to-day -day basis whenever they get stuck. But the question is, what bot are we gonna be building today? Well, we are specifically gonna be building a bot that collects data and it collects leads. Now, how are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna have a bot press bot that is then gonna collect the data, <laughs> obviously. We're then gonna use Zapier to send a webhook and send the data that is collected from this bot to a spreadsheet or a CRM. And that sales sheet and CRM is gonna be accessed by the sales team of the accountants who will then turn them into paying clients. This is a very, very simple process. Your job is just to help gather that data and put it into a place that the accountants can then go over, review it, and start doing their business. Now, the bot we're gonna be building today is gonna to be beginner friendly. We are only going to be using a knowledge-based bot. For me, the reason why I like using knowledge-based bots is it's like when you go bowling. You put the guardrails up and you're terrible at bowling, you bowl it down and it bounces off of the guardrails and you still end up getting a strike. This is exactly what knowledge-based bots are to me. No matter how bad you are at building a bot, if it's only trained on the knowledge and it's only trained on the stuff that you put into it, it all leads to the same place. You know, we're never gonna be building a bot for an accountant that's gonna go on a tangent and start talking about the Ocean Gate submarine. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like we're building something that has a strict guideline of what it can talk about and what it should be talking about. And that is the key here. This is also the super easy beginner friendly way as well, because it doesn't involve any integrations from Stack AI. And you don't really need to get any devs involved because it's relatively simple and easy to follow along. So I've done this weird diagram here. And the way I see these bots is, if you imagine a human body, the knowledge base is the brain of this human, right? The bot, the questions and all the flows, the entire setup of BotPress is the skeleton. That's what holds it all together. 
And then the Zapier and webhooks are like the organs. These are the things that keep the thing moving. They take good stuff out of the body and they bring good stuff into the body as well. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but you understand what I mean. So we have the knowledge base, which is the brain, the bot setup, which is the entire structure. And then we have the Zapier webhooks to help us manage these leads and send the data to different places. Now, I know a lot of you have questions on about how to actually build a solid knowledge base. And I am making a full video on that coming this week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this as well and let me know in the comments if that's something you need to learn but essentially just to give you a quick overview how you're going to build a good knowledge base is you're going to copy the knowledge from the website of your potential client you can even ask chat gpt you know going into chat gpt and saying hey give me information on this website there's plugins now that you can use to scrape different websites you can scrape youtube videos and you can get a lot of information using gpt then of course you can add a website as well so you can actually just manually add the url of their website and that will also act as a knowledge base and you can use that you can use and upload documents so what we like to do is we just like to load up a word doc and then upload it to our bot and we find that the easiest way to really set a strict structure of that knowledge base and on the other hand if you're working with accountants in the uk for example maybe you can go out to the uk tax authority and start downloading all of these relevant tax documents that you can then upload into the bot because then all of a sudden this bot is now a tax expert not only is it an expert on your client's business but it is a tax expert that can then give accurate and up-to-date advice based on tax questions so another way is you can just ask your client to fill this in you can just ask them for a list of faqs that they get a lot of and then they will be able to provide you with that knowledge base so this is it we want to be building up a very strong knowledge base that acts as our brain for our bot that carries this forward in this video like i mentioned we're going to be going over these two aspects we're going to be setting up that bot so we're going to be building that skeleton and then we are going to be setting up that zapier webhook showing you how you can then integrate that into a google sheet or even a CRM, whatever your client has. But this is what we're gonna be focusing on in today's video. The main goal is we're gonna have an intro sequence. We're gonna collect data, name, email, number, some other bits as well. We're then gonna allow the user to ask questions and we're gonna open up a constant feedback loop of questions here until they're done. And then we feed them into a CTA, which in our case, our CTA is going to be book a call. We want them to leave their information so one of the accountants can call them up. And that is the sales process for these new leads. Like I said, I am gonna be giving you the templates to this bot the resources link is down below in the description of this video make sure you do that and whilst you're down there join our discord community we have a massive ama tomorrow with brett milanowski would love to see you guys over there that is free to join you can come and ask some questions we have so much going on and i would love to see you in there now let's get started building this bot and this is our bot press and this is the bot that we're going to be building in this video so as you can see it may look confusing but it is a relatively simple bot now if we click here and go into our knowledge base we can see that there is a document and this is what the document looks like it's a simple knowledge base and in order for us to make our bot as good as possible we need to keep adding to this knowledge base so let's quickly take a look at this structure so there's an intro we collect data we then ask them if they want more information we then ask what questions they have they ask their questions if we don't know the answer, we send them to this where we say, hey, we don't know the answer because we haven't been trained on that yet. And then we send them back up to their questions. If they get the right question, they come here. They then ask if they want to book a consulting call on the back of their questions. We then send them up to this. We then collect their name and their number. And then we use Zapier to send that information over to a spreadsheet just like this. And as you can see, we collect all of this data. So we have their first name, the last name, the email, the phone number, the business name, the turnover. After that, once we schedule a call with them, we then ask them, do you want to ask any more questions? If they say yes, we send them through the same process. They ask their questions. If they say no, we go to end of workflow. It's as simple as that. Now, this is a really, really basic bot. This isn't anything crazy. We're not using any third party plugins here. This is all within BotPress and everything that BotPress is capable of. There is a BotPress link down below in the description of this video. Feel free to go and start an account there. It is an affiliate link. So that would be helping me supporting this channel. Your bot with a knowledge base attached to it is only as good as the knowledge base you upload to it. If you go half assed on the data and you don't fill it up with those potential FAQs that are commonly asked, you're gonna come into the problem of the bot not being able to answer as much as you would like. Now, obviously we can get around this by integrating ChatGPT, but we can do it all internally inside of BotPress, which is super beginner friendly and something I'd much rather prefer that you learn and start doing because this is going to allow you to get started straight away. So we can come and test our bot and you can see it's asking to ask us some questions. Yes, I'm ready. What is the name of your business? We are called the AI Bot Boys. What is the best email to contact you on? AIBotBoys101 at gmail.com. What is the estimated revenue for 2023? $1 million. There you go. 
yes, I would like to see what you offer. Yes, I want general tax advice. What would you like to know? How much does Finsbury charge for a tax return? Now, I'm just using this business as an example. Of course, yours is gonna look different, but I have used the information from this accountant's website. So Finsbury Robinson charges different prices for tax returns depending on the type of client. The prices start from 60 pound per month, including VAT for individuals, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I have more questions. What services does Finsbury offer? And then it's gonna give a list of services that Finsbury offers as well. So again, we loop it back around saying, do you have any other questions? But in this case, I actually wanna book a free consulting call because this price aligns with what I want, so I do that. So it's now asking, what is my name? AI Boyer, what is the best phone number to contact you on? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good try. Great, a member of the team will be in touch with you soon. Did you have any more questions? Yes, I do actually. I've just realized I want to know how did the Ocean Gate sub sink? And you can see the bots come back and says, I don't know the answer to that question. Do you have another question? So we set it so it has them bowling alley rows up. It's not gonna go off topic and start talking about the creatures of the oceans and how the dinosaurs weren't even real. It's not gonna start doing that. It's gonna stick with our script. So no, I don't have any more questions. Thank you. That is now the end of it. We've scheduled our call. The accountant now has that information because we use Zapier here to send through all of the information and the variables that we collected, the name, the phone number, the email, the name of the business, all of that good stuff. So let's do the fun part. Let's get to building this from scratch. And let's show you exactly how you can do it. So you're gonna come to your BotPress account. You just come up and click create a chatbot. And then we're just gonna jump in and click edit. Cool, so the first thing we wanna do, we now have a blank template. We're gonna come up to this agents tab and we're gonna hit acknowledge agent and remove that tick where it says answer on start node and then click save and we can now begin. So we're gonna right click, click standard node and we're now gonna to wanna to rebuild our bot. Basically in our last one, we made a section where it was an intro and we just introed the business giving some short information about what to expect and then we move them through the process. So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna click add card and that is gonna be a text card. So our text is going to be, welcome to this accountancy. We're here to help you find the answers to the questions you have about our services. Cool, so we can now set it optional to whether or not we want someone to be able to click a button to go to the next step, or we can set it out to be automatically. Now in this case, I'm just gonna do it so we get them to click a button, just so you get used to doing that. So we're gonna click single choice here, and we're then gonna come up here and say, are you okay if we ask you some questions first? And then we're gonna add this little plus button here, which is gonna give us some choices. Now I would just put a yes, I do not mind, because then it just pushes them through the funnel rather than getting stuck there thinking no I don't want to give any data over and then they just don't ever get past the first step so if you just leave that there we can then come and add an expression and what we're going to do here is turn off the AI section and just type in true now what this means is if this first selection has been selected which means it's true we can now move on to the next sequence so the next node we're going to create is going to be one where we collect their business name so whenever you want to collect information from someone now unless it's a preset input like email address phone number full address name that kind of thing we're going to want to use raw input now this is for like custom stuff so in this case we want to ask the name of their business so what is the name of your business then we can come down to here and we can see these variables now what variables are is it allows you to save the responses that you receive as certain things now this is great because when it comes to building the bot later on if we want to reference those variables in potentially an input into some ai or some questions we can do that with our variables. And when we come to exporting this data inside of Zapier, we also are gonna use those variables to know what this data is. So let's set this variable as business name. Now again, we're gonna come down and we're gonna press expression and we're going to type true. So when someone fills that in, it will move forward to the next section. So now I wanna collect an email. Now, instead of going through that process of right clicking and clicking standard node again, we can actually just come and click copy and then we can click paste. Now we do have to be careful with this because we will have to make sure we change everything properly. But what is the best email to contact you on? Question mark. And then we can change the name of this to email. One thing we need to remember is changing that variable. So this time the variable is an email. When it comes to connecting these up, we've got three already now. So we can now click the start is gonna to go to our intro. And then the next step away from intro is gonna be business name. And then from business name, we're gonna to go to email. And you can see we can start to stitch these bot pieces together to build our mega bot. Now the next question we asked was turnover. So again, we can just paste our node in here and we can change this one to turnover and change this 
to what is your estimated turnover for 2023. And our variable is going to be turnover. We now have that. And if we now click test and type in hire, we can see that it comes to our intro. Yes, I do not mind. Then comes to our business name. What is your business name? Business one. Then it's gonna to come to what is the best email? Business one email. And then what is your estimated turnover for 2023? 10K, there you go. That is the end of the sequence so far. So everything is working the way it should be. All clean, all simple. Now this next step, we're gonna be lining up the user to come into some questions and to start asking us things. We've collected some data now. So we're gonna thank them for that data. So next steps, let's say thank you for, thanks for that. We'd love to know how we could help you today. Now, of course, all of this is custom. You can put whatever you want in these text boxes. The only thing you don't want to be changing up is all of these variables and getting messy with those. But these text boxes are relatively simple. They're almost unbreakable where it doesn't really matter what you put in there because it all relies on the stuff that comes after. So we are now going to say, yep, thanks for that. We'd love to know how we could help you today. And then we're going to get them to do a choice. In this case, what would you like help with today? Now we're gonna put taxes, VAT, and then we're just gonna put general information. Now we're gonna to wanna to turn these off because regardless of what they choose, they're just gonna get sent to the same sequence anyway. Now what these actually do though, this is where it gets interesting, is if you wanted to create an entire new bot for just talking about taxes, or an entire new bot that is just trained on VAT or just general tax information, you can start dragging these off to brand new nodules and they won't merge with one another. So this is something you can do. For the purpose of this video, we wanna keep it simple. So we're not gonna do that. And we're just gonna keep it so it goes to the same sequence. So we have our key points that people will want to know about. We're now gonna come and connect our last sequence up so it's all tied in together. And we are now going to ask them what questions they want to know. We're gonna call this one questions. We're gonna add a card and we are gonna ask our first question. So again, we're gonna do raw input because we want them to input the information. And we're gonna ask, what would you like to know? Cool, and this variable is gonna be a question. Now, before we do that, we've quickly got to come back to next steps and add our true. So this means once someone has selected one of these choices, they're now going to get brought down to this section. We're now going to click this tab here where we're asking the question and we're going to turn on our knowledge base. Now, I did say I'm going to be making a full new video about how to build out killer knowledge bases that is going to be coming very, very soon. But for now, I'm just going to upload a document that I scraped off of the website very, very quickly off of this company and I'm gonna upload it to our bot. Now you can see I've got some information about their services. I've got some information about general tax stuff. And then I've also got some information on their prices and their location. So that will be enough for this example. But like I said, the bigger the knowledge base, the smarter the bot. So remember that. Once we turn our knowledge base on, we're gonna see this little book icon here. The next step is we're gonna set up something that allows this bot to, basically if it doesn't know the answer to something, it's not gonna make an error. It's just gonna send them to a different tab. Now I'm gonna make a new node. I'm gonna call it no answer and then i'm gonna add a quick text card saying hey i'm sorry i don't know the answer to this question and then i'm gonna add another one that basically says would you like to ask another question yes i would i'm also gonna add no i wouldn't so that is that we can now add drag this no i wouldn't to the end we can just get rid of them and the part where we said do you want to ask another question i'm just going to drag that back up to our questions box now before we move on we have to add something a little bit custom here this bit could get tricky so make sure you follow this bit closely we are going to add an expression and we are going to copy and paste this in now i'm going to leave this in a document this is essentially going to acknowledge if the knowledge base can't respond to a certain question, it's gonna acknowledge that and send them to a certain sequence based on that result. So in our case, we're gonna send them to the no answer. If that knowledge base can't be answered and this triggers it, they are then going to get sent there. Now, alternatively, we also have to have a sequence that if we can answer the questions. So in this case, we're just gonna create a standard node. Purpose of this node is to essentially allow them to ask another question if they want, or we can send them to the next sequence which is booking a call with our accountant. So we're gonna add a card and we're gonna have it as a single choice. And we're gonna say, did you have any more questions? Our choices are gonna be, yes, I have more questions. And we're also gonna add another, which will be book a free consulting call. Now on this one, you can see that I haven't deselected these parts. This is because we actually wanna use logic here to send them to the next sequence, depending on what answer they come back with. So if they said, 
yes, I have more questions, all we're gonna do is we're gonna send them back to these questions tabs. If they say, no, I don't have any more questions, we're then gonna to a completely different node, taking them out of this question loop and sending them to the next step in our process. So before we're done, we're now gonna to come to our question tab and we're just going to set up our expression. So if this bot answers this question, no problem, we are gonna put true. We're then gonna send our user to that next step that we just built that says, cool, do you have any more questions? Or basically, do you wanna book a call with us? So now we've got the main bulk of this bot actually built and put together. You can see it didn't take very long at all. And we've now got the sequencing for the data we wanna collect. And we now have that infinite question loop set up and enabled on knowledge base. We now need to go and add our knowledge base. So we're now gonna come on over here and click quick start knowledge. Now make sure this is the only knowledge base that you have in there. If there's another one, just click delete. There may be one that says small talk. And then we're gonna to wanna to upload our documents. Now you can add plain text, documents, and a website as well. But what I like to do is I basically just like to build these Word docs, fill them with information that I collect through ChatGPT, scrape from their website manually, and it's just a really, really fast and efficient way to get all the information that I need onto there. Now this document is not big at all. This is just for the purpose of this video, but I do recommend you fill this out as much as you can. You know, spend some time on this, really work with your client to identify what are their key FAQs that they get all the time? What are the key questions that people come into them and ask about? And how can you provide an answer using this chatbot? Like I said before, this is the brain of your chatbot. So this is the part that we need to be working extremely well for this chatbot to even be good. So you're just gonna upload your Word doc in documents and you should be good to go. Once we now have our knowledge base up, we have the bare bone of this entire bot ready. We just now need to test it and see if it can actually start answering questions that we've inputted in into our knowledge base. So we can come and test that by typing in hire here and that activates our bot. It's then gonna go through our sequence. Yes, I do not mind. What is your name? You can put anything here just to skip through this. Okay, turnover, yep. General information, please. And then I want to know what services do you offer? Cool, and it's come back with a massive list of what this accountancy offers. Now you can really, really refine this. When it comes to building your knowledge base, you can literally break it down so question one, answer two, and you can label it so it's super, super easy for this knowledge base to work properly. I've kind of just dumped everything in it for the sample of this video because you're gonna be using your own knowledge base anyway. It's mainly the structure that you guys need of this bot, but you can see here, it pulls directly from that document that we've uploaded and it uses the information that we've trained it on. So we can even ask it a few more questions here. So I've done, how much do you charge for a tax return? The fees for tax returns are fixed and competitive. They are quoted for and agreed in advance with the clients. This allows an easy budgeting and cash flow projection with money payment terms. Yes, I have one more question. Where is Finsbury Robinson located? And it's now given me the address for Finsbury Robinson. Cool, so no, I actually don't have any more questions, but I would now like to book a consulting call. And this brings us up to our next step, which is this node right here, which we have yet to fill out. This is the next part, and this is what we're gonna be doing now. So firstly, we're gonna to wanna to start collecting more information. So we're gonna put a text box here that says, we would love to find out how we could help you more. Please provide us with a few more details. So we're now gonna add a card and what we wanna collect is their name. So again, we're gonna to come to raw input and just type in what is your name. Our variable here is gonna be name, obviously. And then we're gonna add a new card and say what is the best phone number to contact you on. So what is the best number to contact you on? Our variable again is going to be phone, create that, there we go. And now what we need to do is we need to integrate our Zapier into this part because this is the data that we wanna collect. This is where we send this information to a CRM or a spreadsheet for our accountancy that we're working with. So we're gonna to wanna to come on over to Google Sheets and in this case, you can actually copy this, it's super, super simple. We're gonna have first name, last name, email, phone, business, and turnover. You can go ahead and you can set that up. You can pause this video, copy this out, super, super easy. Just name it accountant bot leads or something like that. And then we're gonna come up to Zapier and we're gonna create this Zap. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna select webhooks by Zapier. Now you do need to be a premium user to do this. So if you haven't got a client yet, you know you don't need to go and buy Zapier to do this. You can wait until you've signed someone before you do all the connections. But this is essentially how you're gonna do it. It's gonna be catch hook, click continue, continue again. And you can see we now have a webhook URL. So you're gonna click copy there and we're gonna go on over to our bot press. We're gonna add a card and this is gonna be an execute code card. Now this is the part where BotPress gets a little bit confusing because I personally do not have any coding experience. I've found this just through trial and error um, and this is what works for me. 
I don't know if it's the right way or the best way of doing it. We have devs to do the more complex stuff. So if it works for me, it should work for you. What we're essentially gonna tell this code to do is to send all of the variables that we've collected so far to that Zapier webhook. So we are just sending the variables that we've already collected. So in our case, it's send variables, business name, email, turnover, name, phone to Zapier webhook. We've got our webhook from that Zapier and we've just pasted it into here. And you can see that execute code has gone ahead and it's made this really simple code for us to now use. And we've now collected that information. So we can now come off of that. And now what we're gonna to wanna to do, just let our user know that that has been successful. But rather than it just being a text, I wanna now send them back to ask any questions that they may have, just in case they have more and they wanna keep asking the bot questions. So we're gonna create that new node we're gonna add the new card, which is gonna be a multiple choice. And we're gonna say, great, a member of the team will be in touch shortly. Now, after this, we can say, before we go, did you have any more questions? Now our choice is one is, yes, I have more questions. We can add that. And then we can also add, no, I'm good, thanks. Now, again, we've left these little nodules on because we wanna send them to different places based on their answers. So in the case of them saying, no, we're good, thanks, we're just gonna send them to end. We're now gonna set up an expression here to say that all of this has been filled out, which means that is true, so that we can always send them to this last confirmation step. Now, the only thing we now need to do is we now need to add our new questions in here. Again, we need to copy our infinite question loop here and then just plug it in so that people can go back and keep asking questions, but this side of the bot, if you like. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just going to click copy on this questions. We're gonna paste it here and I'm gonna call it questions two. Super simple, I know. And again, what would you like to know? That's all good. Our knowledge, if it can't be answered, is gonna go somewhere else. And if it can, it's gonna go to the next step. So again, I'm gonna copy this no answer. I'm gonna paste that here. I'm gonna call this no answer two, and I'm also gonna copy this one and call it more questions two. So you can see once you've built it once, you can kind of copy and paste it. As long as there's not any variables that are gonna change inside of that, that's how uh, you can end up tripping over yourself. But this is essentially working for me right now, and this is a uh, nice, simple, example we're not going too detailed or too crazy with this bot so we can do this yes i have more questions is going to bring us down to this question tab no the bot doesn't know the answer is going to take it to no answer yes it has the answer is going to ask it again do you have more questions but instead of this do you have more questions are we going to ask them to book a free consulting call we can just say no i'm done thank you so if they do have more questions, we can re-loop them back around to our questions. And if they don't, we can send them to the end. Now, originally they were going back up. Now, originally they were getting pushed to book a call, but now because they've already done that, we just want to take them to the end and finish the conversation. And again, when we can't answer, we ask them, would you like to ask another question? Yes, I would. We take them back around to questions. No, I wouldn't. We just take them straight to end. That bit looks confusing but it's really not that complicated it's just logic based and it's super simple to follow if you go slow but look let's test out our bot because we are essentially done now we have built this make sure our zapier integration is working make sure it's answering questions making sure it's sending people through to the right sequences and that is the easy part so let's jump into it well, actually, I say this is the easy part. This is the part where you usually bump into loads of issues and you sit there scratching your head for 30 minutes to realize that it was a super simple issue that you had because you hadn't actually dragged one of these to the right sequence or something like that. So if you're struggling to find out what's wrong, take it slow, take a breath, go grab a coffee, then come back to it. Cool, so we're gonna test this here and type in hire. And you can see we're gonna start going through this entire sequence. I'm ready. What is the name of your business? The name of the business is Liam's AI Bots. What is the best email to contact you on? Liam at AIbots.com. Now the reason why I'm filling this in properly is because I want to send the data to Zapier after this as a test as well. So I wanna make sure everything's working with just one attempt. What is your estimated revenue? 950K. Yes, I would like some help. VAT returns, please. Cool. What would you like to know? What is the VAT rate in the UK? The standard VAT rate in the UK is 20% which is correct. I want to book a free consulting call. First, we need some more information for you. What is your name? My name is Liam Evans. What is the best phone number? Put in whatever number we want. Do you have any more questions? Yes, I do. So let's test and make sure this backend question sequence is working as well. What would you like to know? What services does Finsbury offer? So that is all working. We're getting services coming back. Now, what I wanna do is make sure that this no answer is working as well. So I'm gonna say I have more questions and then ask what color is a pig? It's a weird question. I don't know why that's the first thing that came to my head. 
but let's see if we can trip this bot up and get it to send to no answer. I don't have the answer to this question. Do you have another question? So it worked. So the next step is to make sure our Zapier integration is working. Now, what we're going to want to do is come on over to Zapier and we would have already set up that webhook because we pasted it into our execute code card on BotPress. Uh, we're going to click continue and then we're going to find our new request. Here we go. This is our new one, Liam at AI bots. Liam AI bots, 950K. Yep, that's the one we just did. And that is the one we're going to select. So we're now going to come on over to sheets click google sheets now of course you can use whatever you want you can use a crm you can use salesforce you can use hubspot whatever your client has you can integrate into it but in the example of this video we're going to do something very very basic and that's just google sheets everyone knows how to use it it's really easy to use and you can just get set up straight away so we're going to create a spreadsheet row we're going to hit continue we're then going to go through and choose our account and get all that connected up we're then going to choose the spreadsheet that we just made earlier and then choose our worksheet and then we're going to be able to fill in all the details that we started to collect so we have first name we have our last name we have our email we have our phone number as well we also have the business name which is liam's ai bots and then we have our turnover number as well so if we now click continue and we click test action we should now get that information that's come from that bot straight into our zapier spreadsheet which we have right here now this would be the same if it was a hubspot it would have gone straight into that but we can now give our client an opportunity to track the leads that that bot is generating so we're now going to publish this and we're going to run one more test through it we can now come to our bot and we hit publish now to edit your bot we're going to go back to dashboard and we're going to come on over to integrations now by default web chat is connected now web chat allows you to change the name of all of these fields you can remove different things you can add delete clear conversation on exit you can add a bot description you can send this to your clients so they can embed it into their website as like a chat widget but for now all we're going to do is just use the default template it's given us and we're just going to be running a test through this to see if our Zapier connection fully works automatically without us having to do anything. Now remember guys, the key thing here is knowledge base. So the more knowledge you have on this bot, the better it's going to be. I cannot stress that enough. So let's get started. I'm going to whiz through this right to the end of this bot so you can see the final part where we check the Zapier. Cool, so I've done that bot now. I've gone through all the information. I've filled it in. And now let's see if Zapier has sent that lead through to our spreadsheet. And it has. Billy Auto blah, blah, blah. It's now filled in that information and done that. Now, obviously you can customize these fields completely. You can put first name, you can break up into last name, put an email, phone, business, turnover, whatever questions you have. Maybe you want to put budget or you want to put services they're interested in. And then you change the variable of something that they select, like that VAT question that we put in to be an actual answer to what they need help with. And we can put that information here. We just have to edit it in that execute code section on our bot press bot that we set up here where we send the different variables over. This bot is not that advanced. It is relatively simple and straightforward. This is definitely a beginner's bot and it's why I wanted to make this video. I'm not a technical guy. I'm not someone who knows how to write code. I'm not someone who can read these different languages and you know edit things and make my own stuff up. To be honest, we don't need that. ChatGPT can now do that for us and we have platforms like BotPress that can create code from prompts just like this. So definitely get stuck into BotPress. Make sure you fatten that knowledge base out as much as you can. That is literally the lifeblood of these entire bots, especially when you're not you know, using external things like ChatGPT to help answer any logic-based questions. Guys, if you did find value in this video, please smash the like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know down below in the comments, what niche do you want me to build a bot for next? I would love to see it and I would love to make one for you live again so I can help you guys out as much as I can. Like I said, there's gonna be a resources tab down below where you can download this bot and you can also join my free Telegram where I give you the daily behind the scenes action of what I get up to inside of my agency. Guys, if you made it this far, you're all legends. I appreciate you so, so much and I wish you the best of luck in building your own AI automation agency. I'll catch you in the next video. Catch you soon. Bye-bye.